Hello and welcome back to Little Bighorn Treasure Hunting Sources number 20. And the last one, 19, was about the very beginning of the Battle of Little Bighorn. And this is going to be a, a member, Buffalo Bull, or also known as Last Bull, who was present at the very end at Last Stand Hill. And the first piece, and you know, I talked about how lucky I am to have two pieces to the same warrior. Here I have three pieces that I've been blessed with from three different from three different places at three different times. The first one is a cut down sword blade knife with a handmade sheath out of the sword sheath. This one I got from Jackpot Johnny that he found. And uh, the history on it is during my examination of this cut down sword knife with bone handle, I found the name Buffalo Bull, Last Bull, Mini Kanju written in togi around the handle was part of the following message. Greasy grass, rosebud, chief, buffalo bull, last bull, mini kanju, kill many soldiers, hunts, buffalo hunt. This information is shown on illustrations one through four. There's a holster with the blade and buffalo bull has marked this as well. Buffalo bull was also known as last bull and he participated in the Indian wars. I believe he carried this knife at the battles of the Rosebud, Little Bighorn, Greasy Grass. I have attached the history of these battles and weapons taken by the Aglala, Hunkapapa, Cheyenne, and Minikanji. I believe Buffalo Bull's most significant weapon he took at the Little Bighorn was General George Custer's British Bulldog with an ivory handle. Now, if we go over here to the writing, see the two triangles for Rosebud. Remember this here? the four for soldier remember kill here you see the word bull is in an a and remember the n because you go an a and an n in the buffalo bull either one could be buffalo or bull and there's your mini kanji mark also next we'll come over here to this remington 1861 very low serial number 239 and the history on it is during my examination of this 1861 Remington percussion revolver I discovered Buffalo Bull mini kanji written in togi on the left grip as part of the following message Buffalo Bull mini kanji together white bull greasy grass little bighorn which is shown in illustration one Buffalo Bull was born in 1842 he grew to be a great chief and was associated with humps Eat No Dog Band and the Shunka Ute Shni, which split off from the Wan Hin Wega, the Broken Arrows, around 1840. Buffalo Bull and his band fought at the Rosebud and Little Bighorn Greasy Grass Battles. When White Bull, the nephew of Hunk, Hunk Papa Chief Sitting Bull, was wounded after the Little Bighorn, Buffalo Bull brought White Bull back to the Cheyenne River Agency to recover. Buffalo Bull and his band returned to the agency and settled down from White Bull on the Cheyenne River Reservation. <coughs> Buffalo Bull did not fight again. Here you'll see a picture of Custer's Bulldog that he carried or one similar to it. Next, which is the third piece, is this double-pointed war club. This I bought from Bill Agate at the Las Vegas show in January. The, I just purchased another piece there. I'll be, actually, two pieces there I'll be writing about once I get a report from Wendell. Um, but the information on this is, during my examination of this double-pointed stone war club, I discovered the name Buffalo Bull, Mini Kanji, written in togi on the leather strap around the stone head, and also the stone head. And the rest is the same that he fought at the Rosebud and, and the Little Bighorn. Now, there's a family, some stories that, that Wendell has documented about Buffalo Bull. And this story was told by Dewey Beard to Orville Solway at Dewey Beard's Little House on Rapid Creek in Rapid City, South Dakota in the early 1950s. Orville told me years later at his place in Keystone, South Dakota. Dewey Beard said, I and my brother Standing Bear rode with Chief Buffalo Bull at the Battle of Greasy Grass, Little Bighorn. 
Dewey Beard told Orville, when the shooting started, Buffalo Bull gathered his men. We got to the Cedar Coulee, we heard shooting to the north. We rode north along the bluff on the east side of the river. When we got to the deep coulee, we rode straight at Last Stand Hill. The battle was almost over. We helped kill the last of the soldiers. I watched as two Cheyenne, I can't remember their names, but they were a father and son. They were Spotted Wolf and his son, White Elk. Take a white-handled revolver from a man with a blue shirt, sleeves rolled up, he was very bloody. This soldier had hair under his nose. My brother Standing Bear found a buckskin coat laying on the ground. It had a bullet hole in it and was bloody. My brother was only 16 years old, so the two Cheyennes tried to take the coat away from him. My brother fought hard to keep the coat. Chief Buffalo Bull rode up to the fight, and my brother handed the coat to him so he would not lose it. Buffalo Bull found another white-handled revolver in the pocket of the buckskin coat. Buffalo Bull kept the revolver and later gave the coat back to my brother Standing Bear. And those notes were from 1968. And also, he heard a, Wendell heard a similar story that was told to him by White Bull to his grand, that was told to, by White Bull to his grandson, David Bald Eagle, in 1966. David Bald Eagle told Wendell the story that he had heard his grandfather, Chief White Bull, tell. White Bull said, I was with Chief Buffalo Bull when he, he kept the Cheyenne Chief Spotted Wolf and his son White Elk from taking a buckskin coat from Standing Bear, Dewey Beard's brother. Chief Buffalo Bull found a white-handled revolver in the pocket of that buckskin coat. Standing Bear wanted the coat. It was bloody and had a hole in it. Chief Buffalo Bull gave Standing Bear the coat and kept the revolver. He took the revolver into Canada with him. David, to, to me, his grandfather, White Bull, could not understand the Cheyenne. They got so many things. Spotted Wolf and his son, White Elk, got a white handle revolver also from a man with a bloody blue shirt. He had hair under his nose, no hat, no coat, just a bloody shirt with the sleeves rolled up in leather pants. So, I feel that uh, from all the history that Buffalo Bull and these three weapons were present at the Little Bighorn and he was standing right there over Custer's body, which is just simply amazing. And I have held a bulldog that has GAC because Custer wrote his name on everything, just like that. And I believe that to be one of the two revolvers that was taken from Custer. So that's going to be it for today, and I really thank you for watching again, and I got some more cool stories coming up. God bless.